plus a one nine perimeter circumference and area all produced to you by Mrs. Vanenthorn, your teacher of geometry class. Um, I want you guys to know if you look on page 62 of your textbook, you're going to see these formulas. The square with side, with side length S. The perimeter, don't forget the word perimeter. means add the lengths around the outside. Perimeter means add the lengths around the outside. If you have a square and this side is S, 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 and you add them all together, you have one, two, three, four S's, which is why the perimeter of a square is four of those S's. Area is, think, think about a square of a rectangle, is length times width, or we use base times height. So we're doing S times S, which in algebra is S squared which is why the area of a square is S squared. Um, a rectangle, you have two of these heights, one, two, and two of these bases, one, two. So you have two bases plus two heights, and this is the perimeter of a rectangle. And again, area is base times height. So this is the formula for area of a rectangle. Now, the word circumference means the same thing, but we cannot add a circle. So when you go around the circle, all the way around from start to finish, we stopped right there. When you could, if you could cut that circle and open it up to a straight line, we could measure that straight line. So this is called the circumference, and there's two formulas for circumference. This formula is C, which stands for circumference, equals pi times diameter or this formula, C, equals 2 times pi times R. And area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. So we have area and two formulas for circumference. Why is there two? It depends if you're given diameter, which is the whole length across the circle, or if you're given the radius. which is just half the length of a circle. So if you're given diameter, you're going to use the formula that has a D in it. If you're only given the radius, use the formula with the R in it. Okay, we're going to use these formulas to answer the questions or do the assigned book work. You're also going to use these formulas on future quizzes, and you're for sure going to use the formula on the test that you're going to have this coming Friday. All right, so we're going to use these formulas. Let me move this up. I want to get rid of my ink. Let me clear my smart ink. Hold on. All right. So let me do these two examples with you. And if you need to, go ahead and pause the video and write these examples down. Or if you have your note sheet, you'll ha you're all set to go. And here's my examples. It says, find out, notice there's two directions. Find the perimeter and the area. So I have two answers. This means two answers of the rectangle with a given base and height. Now, this means this is the base because it was listed first and this is the height. So my base equals 5 inches and my height equals 8 inches. So I have to find the perimeter and the area. Let me erase this so I can use my formulas. Okay, perimeter is equal to 2B plus 2H. Area is equal to BH. What we're going to do is you write the formulas down and we substitute, we plug it in, plug it in, the base and the height into the formulas. So I'm going to replace my B with 5, I'm going to replace my H with 8. So it looks like this, 2 times 5 plus 
2 times 8. I have to simplify this. 10 plus 16 is equal to 26. Now here's the thing. You always have to be careful of your labels because now we have labels. These are being measured in inches and inches. And because we have the same unit, the length is also going to be measured in inches. And I'm done with my problem. So perimeter is 26 inches. Now we're going to do the same thing with area. I take my base, which is 5, technically inches. I'm going to multiply it by my height, which is 8 inches. So I'm going to multiply 5 times 8, which is... 40. This is great. Area is 40. But don't forget you're multiplying inches times inches which in math is inches squared. So you have a different label. Perimeter is in what we call single units, inches, and area is always in squared units, inches squared. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with letter B, but I want to tell you to be very careful be careful. Why do you have to be careful? Well, this label is in centimeters and this label is in meters. And we cannot do this problem if we have different labels. So we have to do this thing called convert. If you don't know how to convert, you look on page 766 of your textbook and it will give you conversion factors. But first, I have to be able to convert. All right, so don't forget, you guys, you have to convert first. So I choose to take my bigger unit and convert it into smaller ones. I know there's 100 centimeters in a meter. So now I have these new dimensions. 2 times 100 is 200 centimeters. So there's 200 centimeters and 2 meters. And now I'm ready to find the perimeter and area of this rectangle. So my perimeter, using the formula 2b plus 2h, I got 2 times 80 plus 2 times 200. This is equal to 160 plus 400. This is equal to 560. Don't forget your label. I'm measuring in centimeters. This is the perimeter of that rectangle. I'm going to do the same thing with area. Area is equal to base, which is 80 times height, which is 200. Area is equal to 8 times 2, I know is 16, with three zeros. Don't forget your label. Centimeters squared is your area. All right, now we're going to do the same thing using the formulas for circumference and area of a circle. Circumference, don't forget there's two formulas. It's either 2 pi r or pi d. Area is pi r squared. So we're going to use these two formulas to find the circumference and area of these circles with the given information. For example, A, they're giving us r. This means radius. So I'm going to use this formula and, of course, this formula. So we're going to start with circumference. Circumference is 2 times pi times the radius. So I go 2 times pi times 10. Now be careful. Let's read the directions, both in terms of pi and to the nearest tenth. So in terms of pi means ignore the pi and multiply your two numbers, 2 and 10. 2 times 10 is 20, and you put the pi back in. 2 pi, 20 pi, excuse me, millimeters is my circumference for this problem in terms of pi. Now, if I want it to the nearest tenth, you take your calculator and you literally multiply 20 times pi. The value of pi is 3.14, but I like to use the pi button directly on my calculator. So I'm going to multiply 20 times pi. And according to my calculator, it's 62.83 to the nearest tenth is 62.8 millimeters. We're going to do the same thing for area. Area is equal to pi times the radius squared, which is pi times 
10 squared. Order of operations says I have to do my squaring first. So 10 squared is equal to 100. This is 100 pi. And again, label is millimeters squared because I'm doing an area formula. To the nearest tenth, I do 100 times pi in my calculator. Get 314.15, which is approximately 314.2 millimeters squared. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. This time they're giving you a picture, and you have to think, what are they showing in this picture? When they give you the whole line across, this is your diameter. I'm okay using diameter with this formula, but in the area formula, I absolutely need my radius. So to find your radius, you take your diameter and divide it by 2. 8.4 divided by 2 is 4.2. This is my radius. Now I'm ready to use my formulas. Circumference is equal to 2 times pi times 4.2, which is equal to 8.4 pi. Area is equal to pi times 4.2 squared. I need my calculator for this one. 4.2 squared is equal to 17.64 pi. Now I'm going to convert this into tenths. So okay, I'm going to actually multiply 8.4 times pi. I get about. 26.4. I'm going to multiply 17.64 times pi. I'm going to get about 55.4. Don't forget you have labels. For this first one it's feet. It's a regular single unit. For the second one it's feet squared. And you're done with these answers. Okay, I have one more example to show you how to do this with graphing. And I want you to go ahead and pause and let's get the graphing ready to go. All right, you guys, this is going to be a very challenging problem. It's not going to be as easy as what you think. And it says this, draw the figure in the coordinate plane, find the perimeter. Um, this shape has three points, A, B, and C. So obviously this is going to be the shape of a triangle. So I need to first plot my point. So A is at negative 4, negative 1. So I start at the origin and I count 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left and 1 down. So I got this point. I'm going to call this point A. The next point I have is B. It's at 4, 5. I start at the origin. I go 4 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have a point. I'm going to call this point B. The last point I have is at 4, negative 2. That means I go 4 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2 down. 1, 2. And I have this point C. I'm going to connect these points. Here's my triangle, and now it says find the perimeter. Perimeter means you got to find the length or the distance around the, the shape by adding. I don't know these distances. I have to use the distance formula to find the length of AB. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to find this length of AB. So I'm going to find the distance of AB. And I'm going to use the Sleeping Man Dude or the distance formula to help me do this. So first, he's sleeping. He has a nose in the middle, two eyebrow piercings, and a headband. I'm going to put the X's in the first die. So for A, my first X is negative 4. B, my first X is positive 4. I'm going to put the Y's in the second eye. For my first Y, it's negative 1. My second Y is 5. I'm going to simplify this equation. This is equal to negative 8 squared plus negative 6 squared. This is 64 plus 36 equals to 100. Square root of 100 is equal to 10. This length is 10. Now I have to find the length of 
AC, which is right here. So I need to know what AC is equal to. Again, I'm going to use the sleeping man dude. So I have two eyes and a nose, two eyebrow piercings, and a headband. AC, the first point of A is negative 4. I'm going to put that in. First point of C is 4. For my second point, first point of A is negative 1. Second point of A is negative 2. And I have to simplify this. This is equal to negative 8 squared plus 2 negatives make a positive. Negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1 squared. This is 64 plus 1. Square root of 65. The square root of 65 I'm going to type this in my into my calculator. So shift square root 65 equals 8.06, which is approximately 8.1. So I have 8.1. Now the nice thing about this next line is it is a vertical line, straight up and down. And because it's a straight line, I can literally count <coughs> Excuse me, how long this is. So I can count. Starting at B, I'm going to count 1. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. <coughs> so without using the distance formula, because it's a straight vertical line, BC is seven. Now that I have all my lengths, I just add them. So perimeter is equal to ten plus eight point one plus seven, which is equal to twenty five point one units. And I'm done. Okay, last example. They give you the area of a rectangle is 104 centimeters squared. They want to know what is its length. So if you think about it, area is equal to base times height or length times width. I'm going to use this formula of length times width because they're giving me wide and they want me to find length. I'm going to substitute what I know. Area is equal to length times width. I know the area. They tell me the area is 104 centimeters squared. So I replace this. Equals length, I don't know, times width is 8 centimeters. I'm going to use algebra. I want to get my variable L by itself. It's being multiplied by 8, so I simply divide by 8 centimeters. The beautiful thing is these cross out, leaving me a length equal to, and I take 104 and divide it by 8, I'm going to take my calculator, go 104 divided by 8, I get 13. Now, what's the label? I have 2 centimeters up here and 1 centimeter down here, so this 1 cancels out with that 2, leaving me with one centimeter as a dimension and I just found the length of this problem. All right, do, do, do. long video. I hope you guys have a great night and come back ready to share your answers. You have a good night. Bye.